Hello Mouses! Today what I want to talk about is this new legislation coming out in the UK, the Enterprise and Regulatory Reform Act. Don't worry, it's more interesting than you think because under this new law, the UK can now say, oh, we can't find all of your information about you creating this work of art, so everyone can use it! <laughs> Now, if you think what I just said before the titles there was a bit off, then you would be right. It's a big deal what's just happened. This new act effectively allows orphaned works to be licensed by anyone who wants to use them without the consent of the owner, because apparently the owner can't be found. Under current law, if you don't have the right to use a copyrighted work, then you can't use it until it's out of copyright. And the reason this is, is that it protects the people who own it. If I have my work and you want to use it and I say no, you can't use it. It doesn't matter why I've said no, it's just you can't use it because I've said no. But if you want to use a work that I've created but you don't know that I've created it and no one knows that I've created it, well, next to no one, then what do you do? You can't ask me to find out whether I'll let you use it or not. I possibly will, possibly won't. You don't know. So. Under current legislation, the law says you can't use it. You've got to assume that the person has said no. This new law allows you to say, oh, I can't trace the person who made this. We've done everything we can to find out and the creator of this is just not around. So I'm going to use it. I'm going to pay this agency here that monitors orphaned works, as they're called, which are works that no one can actually find the owner of because there's no ownership details. I'm going to pay them a licensing fee so I can use this work. And then if the owner comes forward later on, they can go to this agency over here and say, look, I'm the creator of this, here's the proof, give me the licensing money. And they will. But what if I'm the creator of that work and someone I don't like has used that work? What can I do then? Absolutely nothing. And this is a real problem. I have, and other artists have, limits on who can use my work. For example, if I create something that's really cool, or even if I create something that's not really cool. I am be able to say, no, fascists can't use my work. I don't want to associate with them because it might come back on me. And that's perfectly within my rights. I can limit who uses my work, but if it's an orphaned work and it turns out that I've created it and I didn't know and no one knew that I'd done it and I didn't know that someone was using it, well, I have no ability to say there are limits on who can use this work. So. I have to say, I'm not really in favour of this new legislation. What it's basically come down for is a lot of museums and libraries have collections of work that they can't identify the author of, but they want to be able to make it available to people. And currently they can't. So this new legislation allows them to make use of this material with the payment of a fee. But it doesn't limit it to that. It's not limited to these people. There are going to be guidelines when it comes out, but at the moment, all that's required is that a diligent search for the owner has been made. But there's no definition of diligent search. Now, this isn't unusual for laws. A lot of the time there's wiggle room put into legislation in order to cover as many possibilities as possible. But it's going to cause problems because no one knows what a diligent search is. Is it going to be what a reasonable person would expect of someone who is trying to find the owner of a work? Or is it going to be limited to a Google search and looking at some websites where you often find pictures? Because if it's that, then that's terrible. And here's why. Here's one of my creations. It's a comic. It's one of my more popular comics, so I know that people have seen it. Google also has it cached, so I know that it can be found on Google. I've just done a Google search for it here, and it's come up. It's come up saying, oh, this is from all over the house, and it's got some links. But often, when images go on to image-sharing websites, what happens is someone decides that they're going to cut off the top and bottom of the comic. And this often happens because they cut off the signature of the artist and the title of the comic. I don't understand why. I think it's just that some people are weird, but that's what happens. So we'll cut the top and bottom off the comic and see what happens. And it still finds it. That's great. So, a diligent search on the comic itself would bring up my ownership. But then again, if you looked at the comic from the original file, you'll see that my ownership information is on there along with the title of the comic. So, at this stage, all we can say is, if it was a diligent search, then we'd have to start with the cropped version of the image. But that finds me. So, that can't be the limit of what we do. Let's have a look a bit further. If we crop down to just one panel, 
what happens then? Oftentimes, people will want to use just one panel, for example, on a t-shirt or a greeting card or something like that, because they think it summarises what you want to say and it'll be funny. Now, if you put up that one panel into Google, Google can't find my comic anymore. It brings up a list of other comics, but they're nothing to do with my particular comic. So, at this point, Google search will fail. What else can we do? Well, a lot of the time it's image searching sites. You could have a look on there and maybe post, does anyone know who created this? Perhaps people will know and come back at you. That can happen. It often happens on Tumblr when someone posts a piece of work that no one seems to know the author of. Someone will come along and say, oh, it's by X, Y, and Z, and then they'll add a source to it so you can go back. That's great. You can't always rely on that because not everyone will have seen everything, of course, but it's worth doing. So would that be included in a diligent search? Would you have to wait a few days for someone else to come along and say, oh, it's by X, Y, and Z? I would be happy to have that as a requirement, but I don't know whether it will be. And that's the problem with this kind of subjectivity in law. The diligent search is not something you can give clear guidelines on. Someone's going to have to take this to court, which means someone's going to get into trouble. I don't like that in law. I like clarity and specificity. But at the same time, I recognise that that's not always appropriate. And if you made it so clear that we can put a guideline out, then someone will come along and work a way around those, because they always do. But in case you think that a Google search is a bit flawed in the way I've just done it there, just to crop an image and see what would happen if, for example, we went to Google image search with part of a famous painting. I've cut here part of The Persistence of Memory by Salvador Dali. It's just a clock. I put that into Google search and, oh my goodness, there it is. So Google search for cropped images can work, and I think that's the first stage in what would be a diligent search, but it can't be the end of it because it doesn't work always. And here's another thing. If you go to several image sharing websites like uh, Nine Gag, Funny Junk, that kind of thing, some of them put a watermark onto the images that are hosted there to tell you where they've been hosted from. So we've got to take that into account when looking at these due diligence searches. Because if you add a little watermark and a few other bars of stuff that sometimes gets put on by these websites, oh my goodness, all of a sudden now, here's the result of something that's been shared for a while. Now Google can't even find the comic based on the full set of frames. Remember that we had the original cropped image and that worked? And then we just add this bar and bit, a bit of extra text. And we've also changed the text in the speech bubbles because that often happens too. Oh my goodness, now Google can't find it at all. So we've really got to be careful on what the parameters of a diligent search will be because if they're limited, they're not going to work. And if they're too wide, then they're not going to work. This is going to be a big problem and we're going to have to watch this very, very carefully if this part of the new act is ever actually brought into force. At the moment it's not in force, so don't panic too soon. But do remember that at some point it's very likely that copyright in the UK is going to change drastically. So don't have many nightmares about what's going on because at the moment it is business as usual, but keep an eye on the legislation and the newspapers and we'll do the same and I'll bring another update video when and if this comes into force. But until then, thank you very much for watching. If you did like this, remember to click the like button, share it with your friends so that they can see what's been going on in law as well. And do subscribe for future videos because there will be more in the future. But until next time, I've been Zoe Kirk Robinson, you've been watching The Knob Mouse Show and I'll see you tomorrow.